the latest on the investigation of just what happened to a professional golfer, just 25 years old, found dead in her home outside of Las Vegas on Sunday. In a moment, our exclusive interview with the shocked parents of Erica Blasberg. But first, Neil Karlinski with more on how her friends and fellow golfers are reacting to the news. At the Bell Micro LPGA Classic in Mobile, Alabama, some of the world's best female golfers could hardly be more distracted. One of their own, 25-year-old Erica Blasberg, who was scheduled to tee off today, was found dead in her Nevada home, and no one seems to know why. I just lost it. I mean, like every 10 minutes, I just like stared to space. Because I can't believe it, I'm not going to see her. Overnight, tour organizers held a memorial service as a tribute to the energetic golfer with the looks of a model. Blasberg's death remains under investigation, despite early speculation it could have been suicide. Golfer Irene Cho was Erica's closest friend. It's hard. It's really hard. I think it impacts all of us. Friends here at her home club back in Nevada don't understand it either. After all, this is a woman who is positive and enthusiastic about everything. But recently, those closest to her noticed a shift. Friends say she was down on herself for her poor performance last year and even considered leaving the game. The LPGA golfers lead the loneliest lifestyles in professional sports. Uh, they are uh, often going it alone. But when you're struggling, as Erica was, you know, when, when you are, things aren't going well, it is a tough life. An official cause of death remains uncertain, but on the LPGA tour today, they are sure of this. Erica Blasberg was a fierce competitor and beloved friend they won't soon forget. For Good Morning America, Neil Karlinski, ABC News, Henderson, Nevada. And a beloved daughter. I had a chance to speak with Erica's parents, Debbie and Mel Blasberg. Media reports first said Mel Blasberg believed his daughter may have committed suicide. Well, he sets the record straight on that and much more. But first, the unbelievable pain of losing their daughter. As a mother, it's, it, you, you, just, you just don't, you, you can just not imagine how it feels to lose a, lose a child. And uh, my heart goes out to any mother or father out there that has a, has a child that's passed away. It's, you, it, it's just something that you just, I don't know how, how I'm going to make it to tomorrow. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, I, I can't explain it. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's indescribable. There's still an ongoing investigation, and of course you want to know um, why this happened. Can you give us any idea of what you're, what you're being told about the circumstances of her death? No, what, we what, what we're being told is the investigation is ongoing, and um, I believe that's the position the police department prefers so they can give us the answers that we need. A man made a 911 call that you, you told us about. Any idea who that was who made the 911 call? You know, I don't. And um, I, th again, anything related to that is being kept from me. You're going to have to direct that to the Henderson PD. And keep in mind, we're on your side of the camera. The investigation and, and, and th that type of thing is, is important and uh, because people want to hear that but where I, I do want to know it it's not going to change the fact that Erica's not mm -hmm. going to be here I, I don't believe there's such a thing as closure when was the last time that you spoke with her I know that you work with her I saw her last Thursday Erica came back from a tournament in Mexico and she had a real good tournament and she was excited and uh, if she had more time, she'd come out to California, and she was doing that the last few weeks, but she called and said, I can't do it, I'm leaving Saturday, why don't you come out? And next thing I know, I had a couple of tickets uh, in my email, and I went out, and we just had a great day. You know, she was doing things in a way that I hadn't seen for a while. She went through a horrible year last year in golf, right. just nothing worked, and I was worried about her, and I, I saw the old Erica. So... Her death would be a shock if I hadn't seen her for a year. And I felt so good leaving here, I felt, you know, my daughter's back. You've backed off somewhat of, of those earlier statements that you made about what could have been the cause? 
I never made any statements. In fact, things get misquoted, but things when they're not said are very difficult to trust anybody in, in media. And that was never said. There is no issue at whatsoever about Erica being in a situation to do anything to herself. The girl was up, the bags were packed. She had a great event in Mexico. She looked, talked great to me on Thursday. Why she didn't go to leave Saturday morning is something that's investigated. And Debbie, tell us about your daughter. What didn't we know about your sweet daughter? Oh, Erica, I, I mean, it's just hard to, hard to put into to words. She was just, Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I just love her and miss her. And Mel, I'll give you the, the last word. What do you want us all to remember most about Erica? Erica was a friend of everybody she touched. And those people who were, uh, were touched by her just remember her. Well said, and we will remember her. We will, Mel and Debbie. Thank you. Uh, our sincerest, deepest condolences to you both, and thank you so much for your willingness to talk thank with thank us. Thank you, Robin. It was very difficult for them to speak out, but they wanted to set the record st straight, and the police are not providing any details at this time, waiting for toxicology reports to come back, which will take six to eight weeks.